Today we are going to look at self-learning AI, what it is, where it stands today, the hurdles we still face and what the next 5 to 10 years could look like. Before we delve into the topic, let's define a few terms you'll come across in AI. Model. This is the brain of an AI that makes predictions. Training. This is a process where the model looks at data and learns patterns. Data. Information fed into the model, which could be a mixture of text, images, video, audio, sensor readings and other types of information. Reward. A cue indicating to the AI that it is performing well. For example, scoring a goal. Bias. Systematic errors that make the AI favour or discriminate against certain groups. Alignment. Making sure the AI's goals match human values. Edge device. A small computer which could be your phone or an Internet of Things device with sensors, which runs AI locally and not in the cloud. So what are the differences between traditional AI, the AI used in large language models and self-learning AI? Traditional rule-based AI was programmed by humans. Engineers wrote explicit rules. If the sensor reads 70, turn the fan on. The system remains unchanged unless a programmer modifies it or adds a new rule. It's easy to trace how you arrived at a result. You can point to a rule, if X and Y, then Z, and see why the system acted in that way. Large language models learn from massive amounts of text. It reads billions of sentences and figures out patterns on its own, adjusting millions or sometimes billions of tiny knobs or parameters automatically. It can be hard to explain the decision as it comes from billions of tiny weight adjustments. We can't point to a single rule that caused a specific answer. Self-learning AI learns on its own. The system discovers the rules by observing data or interacting with the world, much like a child learns to walk by trying and correcting. These models are continually updating while they interact with their environment. However, the number of learn parameters is significantly smaller than that with a large language model and also makes it easier to audit. So what are the main technologies currently in use? Self-supervised learning. For example, large language models like ChatGPT. These learn from massive raw data stores without needing human written labels. It powers chatbots, email drafting, code suggestions, and so on. An analogy would be a child reading every book in a library and learning the language just by predicting the next word. Reinforcement learning. This trains agents that learn by trial and error and a reward signal. Used in game-playing AIs like AlphaGo or OpenAI 5, warehouse robots and some autonomous driving prototypes. An analogy would be a robot learning to walk by trying steps, failing and gradually figuring out the best balance. Meta-learning. Learning to learn. This enables a model to adapt a new task with only a few examples. Appearing in personalised recommendation and rapid deployment medical diagnostics. An analogy for this would be a student who, after studying many subjects, becomes faster at picking up a new one. Automated machine learning. This automates the design of AI models, architecture and hyperparameters, so non-experts can create effective models. Now being offered as a no-code service on cloud platforms. 
An analogy would be a chef who automatically adjusts a recipe to suit different tastes. Genitive AI These create realistic images, music, video and even 3D objects. Used in design, entertainment and rapid prototyping. An analogy would be an artist that can paint new pictures after studying thousands of artworks. Neurosymbolic systems. These combine the pattern recognition capabilities of neural networks with rule-based reasoning, enhancing both explainability and logical consistency. Although it is still in the early stages, it shows promise for applications in safety critical areas. An analogy would be a detective who combines the gut feeling, neural networks, with logical clues, symbolic reasoning. So what challenges still need to be tackled? Data quality and quantity. Learning is only as good as that which you feed it. Bad or biased data leads to biased or unsafe behaviour. Massive datasets exist, but they often contain hidden prejudice, errors or privacy-sensitive information. Compute and energy cost. Training a self-learning model is like running a city-wide data centre for weeks. Expensive, and with a larger carbon footprint. Training state-of-the-art models can cost millions of dollars and use large amounts of energy. Safety and reliability. A self-learning robot that figures things out might discover unsafe shortcuts. For example, a delivery drone that flies over a restricted area. Expected failures will still happen. Rigorous testing for every possible scenario is impractical. Interpretability, or understanding why. Humans need to trust a system. They want to know the reasoning behind a decision. Most self-learning models are black boxes. They give an answer, but the internal logic is opaque. Alignment with human values. The AI must pursue goals that match what we actually want, not just what it thinks is best. Aligning very powerful learners with nuanced human ethics is an open research problem. Regulation and governance. Without rules, we risk misuse. For example, deepfakes and automated weaponry. Or unfair market advantage. Legislation is catching up, but standards differ across countries and sectors. Skills gap and accessibility. Companies need people who understand how to build, monitor and correct self-learning systems. The shortage of AI talent means that many small businesses cannot afford in-house expertise. Looking ahead to the next five years. More efficient learning. With new algorithms, for example sparse and modular networks, this will cut training costs by between 50 to 70%. There will be a faster rollout of AI features on phones and edge devices, with a lower carbon footprint. Domain-specific learners. AI that learns inside a particular industry, for example healthcare, finance or manufacturing, without needing massive generic data feeds. Doctors could get AI assistants that adapt to a hospital's own records, improving diagnosis while respecting privacy. Better safety nets. The creation of integrated monitor and stop layers that automatically detect unsafe actions during learning. For example, autonomous delivery robots that pause when they encounter unexpected obstacles, reducing accidents. Personalised AI companions. The creation of self-learning agents that understand an individual's preferences after only a few interactions, 
for example, virtual tutors that adapt to a student's learning style or home assistants that anticipate your schedule. Regulatory frameworks. Common standards. For example, ISO for trustworthy AI become mandatory in many regions. Companies will need to certify their self-learning products, giving users more confidence. Wider adoption of automated machine learning. No-code AI platforms become mainstream, letting small businesses create custom models in days. Local shops could use AI to predict inventory needs without hiring a data scientist. And how about the 10 years ahead? Generalist self-learners. One AI system that can fluidly switch between many tasks, language, vision or control, by reusing knowledge already gained. Seamless personal AI that helps with everything from drafting emails to controlling home appliances. Self-improving, self-repairing systems. Robots that diagnose their own hardware degradation and schedule maintenance before a failure. Factories run with far lower downtime, autonomous vehicles becoming safer over their lifetime. Human AI collaborative teams. AI partners that learn together with humans, adjusting to each team member's strengths. This will assist complex projects like climate modelling or drug discovery, accelerating as AI augments human creativity in real time. Fully transparent reasoning. Hybrid neurosymbolic models that can explain decisions in plain language. Legal and medical decisions aided by AI become auditable, increasing public trust. Energy neutral training. Breakthroughs in neuromorphic hardware and algorithmic efficiency bring training emissions close to zero. AI growth no longer conflicts with climate goals and there was a broader adoption in low resource regions. Global Governance for Self-Learning AI International accords that set limits, share mechanisms and safety certifications. Reduced risk of an AI arms race, coordinated response to misuse and equitable benefit distribution all take place. So why should self-learning AI matter to you? AI systems are already part of our lives, more so than many people realise. This impact on how we work and live our lives is only going to increase in the years to come. Learning enough about it will help with how you transition to the environment that AI will enable. AI is a tool that can be used to improve our lives and solve many problems we currently have, and those still to come. However, this transition is not without its challenges. Unlike the inventor of the hammer realised quite quickly, hitting yourself on the thumb with it is something to avoid. Takeaway for decision makers. Invest now in more efficient, domain-specific self-learning tools. They will pay off in productivity and cost savings within five years. Prioritise safety and transparency. Adopt frameworks that require explainability and robust testing. Plan for talent. Upskill staff or partner with AI service providers to bridge the expertise gap. Monitor regulation. Early compliance with emerging standards will avoid costly refits later. Self-learning AI is moving from a cool research demo to an everyday utility that will reshape how we work, learn and interact with technology. By understanding its current state, the challenges ahead and the realistic timeline for its evolution, you can make informed choices that harness its benefits while safeguarding against its risks. But that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching today's video. Please feel free to click on the link in the description below to discover more videos.